What is this? Someone give me the moral of that. What's the moral to this? What is this similar to? There's no moral. This is a map. It's a Thompson Brothers map. Well, there's got to be a moral here somewhere. There's no moral here. What's similar to? What, is it, what do you mean similar to? Chicago? No, it's, this is San Diego. What is this? A map. What's the purpose of a map? Not a map. A map. What's the purpose? Does anyone ever use a map anymore? I know, this used to be my, my second Bible, so to speak. And when, I, when I worked, I had to go someplace. I need to pull out my Thompsons and I'd find it. Right? Now we have Google instead. Boy, talk about getting lost. OK. So this is a map of San Diego, right? Why is this existent? And what do all the symbols mean? How many of you can read a map? Can you read a map? Can you, can you read a map? Right? But why is it so hard to read a map? Because you got to know where you are, and you got to know where you're going. And the symbols tell you what's between you and where you're going. And it tells you how to get there. I made it. So you got to know where you're at and where you're going, and it tells you everything in between and how to get there. That's it. So there are symbols on here that will drive you absolutely nuts. And you're like, I can't read this thing, right? Well, what does it say? I don't hear anything. You understand? It, it, it doesn't talk to you. You don't. I've been to elementary school. I could read. Okay, read this. Like, I, whoa. whoa. You know, you can't, you've got to understand where you are and where you are what? Going. If you have no destination, this won't, it'd be impossible to read this. Does that make sense? So, what are these symbols? They all have a what? Meaning. So, is this an allegory? No. Is it a simile? No. What is this? It's a map of a piece of paper with a whole bunch of what? Symbols. What does this symbol mean? What does this green symbol mean? What does the blue color mean? What does this red line mean? What does it represent? Freeway, exactly, it's a freeway. What's this one represent? A freeway. What are these small lines in between? Those are streets. So if you can't read this, even though the symbols are there, you just need to know what they represent, right? If you want to go somewhere, right? So there's no allegory out of this, right? So what's the moral of the story here? There's no moral. <laughs> don't try and go anywhere if you don't know where you're at, right? Right, so this will tell you where you are, and it'll tell you where it is you want to go, and it'll tell you everything in between. So you can decide whether you want to take a side street or you're going to take the freeway or if you're going to take the other way around. This is the Thompson map. So what's the allegory to this? There is no allegory. So what's the moral of the story? There is no moral. It's not an allegory. All right. What is it, is it, give it, what's a simile? There's no simile. What's the story from it similar to? There's no story here. It has nothing to do with it. So is it a metaphor? Is it a metaphor? So you actually say this green is a forest or a park. That blue is a lake. The red is what? Freeway. The black lines are streets or boulevards. You say these lines are. This is. Does that make sense? Because these are all what? Metaphors. This is that. This is that. Well, why is this important? Well, if you don't know, you got to know where you are and where you are what? Going. When you come to the Word of God, you got to know what? Where you are, where you're going. Now, let's just say someone who's never read a map, and you ask him, what's the red lines? And he'll tell you what that is. That's red rivers. <laughs> <laughs> that 
What's the little airplane for? That little airplane is for people who like, like models. You can pick up models there. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying, you know, you, well, what's this Chinese character that looks like this and got two legs and an A? Looks like an A with a top on it? That's a Japanese character. Japanese people are there. No, it's a freaking picnic bench. It has nothing to do. You understand? If you don't know what the symbols represent, you're going to blow this thing. You're going to just, you might as well give it up. You know, you're not going anywhere. It, what this tells you is where you are and how to get to where you want to go. It's all what? Metaphors. No private interpretation. Don't you hate when people privately interpret the map? I had someone, I was going to a place I've never been before, right? I hate that when it happens. And I'm driving, and it's really intense because there's so much traffic. So I gave it to the person that's sitting there. So I said, here, tell me where I need to go. And he's sitting there going through the thing. And he's like, I, don't, I can't read this. And he threw it out the window. He, there was almost news that day. So a man was found strangled today. Uh, I'm about, <laughs> like, you did what? Stop the car. So go back and get that map. It's like, ah. So, and I had no idea where I was. I had no idea how close I was to where I was going. You've got to have a what? A map. Well, I can't read it. He had no experience at all with maps. So what do you do? Take it away from him. <laughs> you pull over and you read the map, right? All right. That was before GPSs, yes. Metaphors. What do the symbols mean? So how do you find out on a map what the symbols mean? Well, I'm trying to read it. I, it doesn't say anything. It's just got all kinds of funky images and symbols. Oh, you mean this? What's this called? A legend. A legend. Everybody repeat after me. A legend. If it's going to give metaphors, it must give a legend. Depending on what map you look at, there will always be a what? Legend. That defines the meanings of the what? Symbols. Find a map sometime. Look at it. And there will be a little box down here. It says, this is what these symbols mean. Right? All right, so let's look at Mark 4, 1 through 9. If it, it's not a simile, it's not an allegory, it's a what? A metaphor. Therefore, it must have a what? Legend. It has to have a legend. It has to. It must. It does. Right? So, what is the sower sowing? If you guess, if you think, then it's, you're turning it into an allegory or a simile. You're adding your own private what? Interpretation. Has nothing to do with you. Has nothing to do with you. Where do you want to go? What do you want to have in life? How rich and fine do you want your life to be? How full do you want it to be? All right, what is the wayside? What are the fowls of the air? Don't guess. Because these are this is not this it's not a simile and it's not an allegory, it's a what? And it has to have a what? A legend. But it's the stony ground. What is the earth? If you guess, if you don't know the legend, then the answer is what? If you don't, if you don't know the legend for the map, then what's the symbols mean? And your answer would be? All right. If you, if you got a map in your hand, like a Thompson Brothers, right? And, and you're trying to figure out where you are and where you're going, and you can't read the symbols, right? What do you do? Guess? Try and privately interpret it? No. You have to find the what? Legend. The legend. And if you don't have the legend, someone says, what do the symbols mean? You have to say one word. Well, 
I don't know. You have to say three words, all right? <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. Nah, you don't know. If it doesn't, if, it, if you can't find the, le the legend, now, and the Thompson Brothers, is the legend always in the same place? No, it's not. You have to turn pages, because four pages or nine pages later, depending on what kind of map you got, you're like, oh, finally. And you go to the front, and you go, oh, there's the legend. You have to hunt it down. Now, what's cool about Mark is this, is this Luke in Acts. No, it's what? Mark. This is written for people who are doing the salt what? Covenant. They need the legend. People who are not doing it, aren't going anywhere, don't even know where they're at. So they don't need a legend. Do you need the legend? I think so too. Do you need a legend? Yep. Otherwise, you're just going to guess. You're going to read something and go, I know what that means. No, you don't. You don't. What is the sun in that parable? What is the root in that parable? What does that mean? What's the thorns? What's the fruit? And if you have made a covenant, it doesn't really matter. But if you have made a covenant, then God's got to bring to pass his power for you because you're on track with him. You're seeing his perspective, his priorities, his truth, and you care about the things he care about, and God's going to focus on you. Isn't that cool? So, is there, again, I want you to understand, when the Bible says all, does it mean, what does it mean? It's all without exception, all without what? Distinction. Like if I said, everyone gave me a tie. Everyone? That seven billion people gave me a tie? No, only the people who give me presents all gave me a tie. That's why I got a lot of ties. No, it's... <laughs> But you understand the problem here. We, we use it all the time. We say, oh, everybody's against me. Who is the all? Everybody's angry at me. Who's the all? All 7 billion people on earth? Everybody's just pissing me off. 7 billion people are pissing you off? But we use it, and then we condemn the word of God for using it. No, it's... it's just, God understands. God, uh, God knows who we are. God knows. No, let me ask you a question. When God spoke to Adam and Adam spoke to God, they had that communication, then he blew it. And what is the first thing God says? Where are you? What Adam used to be no longer what? Existed. So does God see everybody? No, God does not see everybody. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Of the 7 billion people on earth, who do you know? Those that talk to you, that communicate with you. You got people that really have the same heart and soul you do. Others you only know by acquaintance and others you've seen from a distance. That's the three groups. The ones that are closest to you have the same heart, same priority. I mean, we're talking the same heart, the same priorities you do. Those are the people you're close to. Those who don't have the same priorities, then you're not as close to them. Does that make sense? So how do you get closer to people? Well, you share thoughts, you share ideas, you, say, you share vision, you share purpose. And when you do, now you get closer to what? Together. And you have the same focal point. Is that making sense? So you grow, you grow, no two people are, are get along, zero. Put two people in the same room, they will not get along, period. But if they have the same purpose, the same goal, the same direction, the same priorities, and as they're focusing on the same point, they merge together and become what? One. If the two people have opposing, then they don't grow closer, they grow further what? Part. So you work with people who have the same focal point, same priority, same orientation as you. 
then there's no problem. But boy, oh boy, when you work with people that have a different perspective and you're going to, then you're trying to get them to change, they're like that monkey with his hand in the gourd and they will not let it go. They will sit there and they'll yank and they'll pull and they're caught between what's in the thing. And, but, but this is what I believed all my life. But I can't let go of that. Yes, you must. The things you thought were true. I ever heard the story about um, and all the all the all the uh, Aesop's fables and all the other fables and stuff. You have what's called uh, Cinderella. Does anyone know Cinderella? Right. Yeah, I don't know her either. But anyway, <laughs> I know the story. I don't know her. But in Cinderella, <laughs> women have this concept of Cinderella where here's this guy that's good looking, got lots of wealth and power, and then Cinderella finally gets revealed and he falls in love with her and they live, they get married and live happily ever after. Well, that's not how real life works. <laughs> it's you have to become a whole new what? Person. And you have to let go of what you had before. Does that make sense? Because there's no longer is your life only your own. It now is to be shared with what? Others. And you all work together for the same what? Purpose. Is that easy to do? No. You got to let go of what you knew before. And people, they wrestle with that. They keep their hand in the gourd and they pull and like, oh, I'm not going to like, you can't grow unless you let it what? Go. Same thing with, with how many ever played on the swing set? Right? How many went when you got money, went and bought candy? <laughs> now when you get money, what do you do? Run down and buy candy. No, you, you don't. <laughs> you got bills to pay. <laughs> you got to be able to pay for gas. You got to pay for insurance. You got to pay your rent. You don't have time and you're not really interested in candy anymore. Does that make any sense? And when you see a swing set, you don't go, oh, a swing set, and go jumping out of your car and, and swing on the swing set. You don't do those things. You let those what? Go. Now, if you still got your hand in the gourd and you won't look, go to the swing set, there could be problems. I have a, someone I met. She's a little girl, and she won't let go of her little girl. And she has this doll that she's had ever since she was a little girl. And when her child got a hold of her doll and damaged it, she punished her child and forbid her to come into her room again because she touched her doll. And it was like, wait a minute, there's a difference between that doll and your what? Child. But that doll was more important than her own what? And that's a problem. She needs to let go of that doll. Is that making sense? So the question is, when a person has got their hand, and you see this with the disciples of Jesus, as they don't want to let go of what they have. Peter didn't want to become a disciple. He wanted to become a what? Fisherman. And that was his battle all the time. And who is he? Is he a disciple or is he a fisherman? We're always battling that. We want and we can't let go of it. And we're stuck. We're, we're just like that monkey, caught. What am I giving you? An allegory, a simile. Because it's similar to what everybody goes through. They don't want to let go of how they define themselves. And they will find any way possible to get out of it. So they can keep their hand in the gourd. And they will go absolutely what? Nowhere. Is that making sense? So I've given you an I've given you a simile, I've given you an allegory, right? But now let's get back to the metaphor. <laughs> Are you seeing how the cool this is? So here we go. Mark four one through nine, and he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great what? Oh, what's a multitude? It's about a thousand people. And it's great. So that means it's over than a thousand people. That's a lot of people. 
I've been at, I've taught the word where over a thousand people. I stood up on stage and there was over a thousand people there. It's pretty exciting. But how many really hear what you're saying? So he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the what? The land. That way they weren't crowding. And he taught them many things by what? Parables. Now here we go. The metaphor. They're all. And saw them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And they're all hearing him say these words, and what are they getting in their mind? There's images, exactly, they're getting images. Our brain is a what? Image processor. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell away side. What are they picturing? They're picturing someone throwing out what? Seeds. And the seeds get off to the side. And the fowls of the air came and what? Devoured it up. So what are they picturing in their mind? Some birds coming down and taking the seeds. Yes? And some fell on what? Stony ground. So all these images people are hearing, and they automatically default to their own personal what? Experiences. They're turning what he's teaching them into what? Similes and what? Allegories, right? With a moral. They're, thinking, they're trying to find out, oh, what's the moral to the story? What is this similar to? Where is this representing? It, no, it's not representing anything. This is all what? Metaphors. What do these words mean? What do they symbol? What is their symbol really mean? You're seeing this, but the symbol you have in your mind, is it the correct symbol? And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. And when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no what? Root. It withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some what? Thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. A hundred what? Fruit. What's fruit? What's fruit? And he said unto them, He that hath what? Ears to hear. What is that? What's an ear? What's an ear? Does it mean the thing that's attached to the side of the face? What does that mean? Does it have a meaning? Other than what we think? a metaphor. It's a metaphor. What am I giving you right now? I'm giving you the absolute best of what I've developed, what I've learned. This far surpasses Bollinger, Kenyon, Bar, Pola. It goes way beyond. Because the Bible interprets what? Itself. Because it is not an allegory. It is not a simile. It's all what? Metaphor. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, what's a really, this, is it a metaphor? The answer is yes. Is it a simile? No. Simile would be private what? Interpretation. Is it an allegory? No. That would be private what? Interpretation. All right. Now, watch really carefully. When he was alone, the teaching he gave without a legend was for who? Everybody. They that were about him with the twelve asked him the what? They want to know what the legend is. Give us the what? The legend. Tell us what these words mean. And he said unto them, unto you. Wait a minute. What happened to the multitude? They all walked away going, that was nice. I know what he was talking about. I can relate to that. They're all... They have no idea what he taught. Zero. And today, read the Bible, people read the Bible, they still have no idea what is being said. And the moment you try and get people off of that, they will scream, they will yell, they will not let go of that 
They're, they can't, they will not let go of what's in that gourd, and they're going to stay there. And no matter what you do, you can't get them out. They have to be able to let go of it. I've taught bishops, I've taught archbishops, I've taught ministers, priests. They will not let go, they can't get, they will not let go of what they have, and therefore they can't leave the gourd. They're stuck, and they will never be free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. But in order to be free, you've got to let go of what you got. Is that making sense? And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve, out of a thousand people, only a little over twelve. That doesn't mean twelve years old. I mean a little over twelve people, right? Not twelve-year-olds. All right. Asked him the parable. What do the words mean? Do you ask yourself when you read, what does this word mean? Are you sure you're getting the proper images? And he said unto them. Them who? Those who wanted to see, to know the what? The legend. Unto you. You who? You who? How many here want to know the legend? You understand, people want to look at the map. They want to read it and give it their own private interpretation. And they're not going what? Anywhere. They got their hand in the gourd, and they're looking at it and say, well, I, this is what I think it is. I think it's just being this tree that I'm stuck in. You've got to let go. Aren't you glad I showed you the monkey thing, right? They call it the monkey and the coconut, but you see it has nothing to do with the coconut. It's the monkey and the what? Gourd. Right. All right, so unto you, you who? Not you who, you who, right? Who's you who? You, <laughs> you who want to see the legend. You who want to know what the words mean. It's given to know the mystery. What's a mystery? What's a mystery? Now, I want you to throw me that box up there. The puzzle, no, the puzzle box. Yeah, that's it. I throw it to me? Oh, okay. Does anyone know what these are? These are puzzle boxes, right? You got to get in there somehow. Look at it. How do you get in there? Right, and, and it's not, it, it looks like, you know, a really difficult box because you can play with it and play with it hours and hours, and you got to learn how to, to get into it. Now, is it easy? Uh, no, it's not. Especially now that I'm trying to show you, it's not easy. <laughs> so, when you deal with the word, <laughs> it's a mystery because we have no idea how to get in there. Well, I, I do, I've done this before. All right. There's the mystery. It's now revealed. Right? Right? But you know how long it took me to figure this out? Hours. <laughs> because it's a mystery box, right? You've got to figure out how to get into it. It's a puzzle box. I, love pu I got a whole bunch of puzzle boxes, right? I, got, I love boxes like that. So I like to figure out things, right? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a one of those weirdos who likes to figure things out. All right. So because the Word of God is just like a what? A puzzle box. And you can have, when you buy these dumb things, right, you get a little legend that tells you what to move first, what to move second, to get it what? Open. Got it? Otherwise, you're, you're sitting there playing, you know, like, what the heck? Right. Well, no, it don't look easy at all. <laughs> All right. So puzzles, you have to you have to have the legend. If you can't figure it out, you need a what? Legend. And it tells you to get the end result of an open box. All right. So here we go. On to you. You who? All right, let's try again. On to you. Is it you? Yes. Why is it you? You want to know what the words are mean. That's right. What do they mean? Remember, it's a metaphor. Okay, everybody go. One, two, three, go. Metaphor. metaphor. Right. What's a metaphor? No, no, no. What's, what's a henway? <laughs> Four pounds. Okay. So, 
<laughs> Bear with me. Are you, are you still with me? Okay, go back. All right. Unto you is given the, to know the what? The mystery, the secret, like a woman's purse. Hey, I have no idea what's in there, right? So she goes, would you go in my purse? Say, no, I am not touching that thing. You, you look in it. Women's purses, man. That's, yeah, I may never get my hand out. <laughs> no idea what's in there. It all could be, yeah. Like, freaking weighs two tons. All right. What do you got in there? Bricks. <laughs> I don't doubt it. All right. All these, okay. So it's a mystery. Nobody, a mystery that nobody knows. The only way you can find out is by working the what? The word. The word will what? Reveal it. How? You keep reading until you find the what? The legend. The legend will always be there. It's somewhere there. And Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, always revealed the mysteries. Then the Apostle Paul. All right. On to you, you who want to know the what? The words. What does the words what? Mean. Not the words, but what do this, the words represent? What are they symbolizing? That's the mystery of the kingdom of God. Unto them that are what? Without. That's that thousand people. They're without. They're no desire. No desire whatsoever. They think they already what? They got their hand in the gourd. And they got it. And they will not let it go. Because that's what they believe. That's their truth. That's how they define themselves. And that's their reality. And they won't let it go. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in what? Parables. Well, he gave them a parable. Did he give them a legend? No. No legend, just the parable. And what did they understand? Absolutely what? Nothing. But unto them there are without, all these things are done in what? Parables. Why is the word of God doing this in parables? I thought God wanted all men to be saved. No, it doesn't say that. I taught you what all is, didn't I? Is it all without exception? No, it's all without distinction who desire to understand and know who? God, that's it. That's who the word of God is for. 